Our story begins with Gwen walking inside a parking garage. She comes to her car to find a rose resting on her window. After she removes it, to drop it on the ground, we wonder who placed it there. By her dropping it, we also realize it is unwanted. Then she arrives home to her husband, Adam. In the washroom, Gwen gets a call from a man that she quickly ends. She also gets some messages. All this makes her somewhat nervous. Another sent message reveals that the man didn't know she was married. Now we come to understand what that rose on her car possibly meant. She is likely cheating on her husband. After that, she lovingly comes to Adam. She may be doing it to shake off her guilt. They talk about him going on a trip for his job, and Gwyn wants to go with him. But he tells her it's not the kind of trip she would like. Nevertheless, she insists on going. There are many pictures of insects throughout their house, because Adam is an entomologist. The trip he is going on is oriented around them. Eventually, it's decided that they'll both go. Soon, they set off on the journey. While they do, Adam shows Gwyn a small bottle he brought, in case one of them suffers from a snake bite. Eventually, the couple arrives at their destination in the mountains. Collecting their supplies, they start their nature hike. As they occupy a narrow trail, Gwyn gets a message. It could be from that same man. She doesn't look at it. They just keep hiking, surrounded by huge mountain views. In another area, Adam picks up what he calls a baboon spider. His profession allows him to quickly notice that it was maybe stung by a wasp. When they leave the area, we see that Adam forgot his other back. Arriving elsewhere, Gwyn undresses to go swimming. She expresses her love for this place. As the time approaches night, the couple has their tent set up. They drink some wine, enjoying themselves in their rich natural environment. Once they are inside the tent, they engage in intimacy. Afterward, there is nothing left to do except sleep. However, as time passes, we observe that Gwyn does not get claimed by the night in the way Adam does. She lies there, possibly thinking about the wrong she has committed. Later, she takes her phone and has to exit the tent to look at it. We see her trying to delete the messages on it. While she does, a bird starts attacking her. It doesn't stop until she hurriedly returns to the tent. Since she got attacked by the bird while deleting those messages, it looked very much like it could have been a punishment for her cheating. In an unknown amount of time, a snake enters the tent. Shortly after, Adam awakens, probably because he felt the snake. He notices Gwyn's phone nearby. She is finally sleeping, so Adam says her name a few times to wake her up. He informs her that something is inside the tent. When he picks up her phone, it makes her nervous. Gwyn puts her hand on it, but Adam urges her not to move. At that moment, they see the snake rise up, which puts fear in the air. As it slithers along the tent, Adam informs Gwyn that if it bites, they have only 20 minutes to get help. Staying calm is key to survival, he also says. If they're calm, the lethal snake will be calm too. Shortly after, Gwyn tells him to destroy it with his knife. Yet he gives her the bad news that he left it outside. Something has to be done, according to her. They can't just lie there. We see the snake in a sitting position now, opening its mouth. Adam advises that they use their sleeping bag as a shield. To do so, Gwyn will have to move. She shakes her head. However, he encourages her. Upon readying herself, we see the snake coiling. It starts slithering under Gwyn, making her panic. The atmosphere is now dense with fear. Adam attempts to calm his frightened wife by telling her to stay with him. He starts using her phone as a light. Then the snake slithers onto Adam. It is attracted to the light emanating from the phone. It even stops to look into it. Soon enough, though, it goes back down. Adam wants Gwyn to look at him, though the fear won't let her. When she does, he says she needs to get herself out. But she cannot do that, either from fear, or from not wanting to leave Adam. Or both. We see the snake is just resting on the man now, making itself at home. It doesn't even realize the fear it's injecting into two humans. Adam wants to hold it down, to give Gwyn a chance to escape. This causes her to cry. She uses her foot to collect a wooden statue that Adam carved earlier with his knife. Seeing this, he tells her to not do anything stupid. After some time passes, Gwyn asks about the snake's whereabouts. Right after that, the anxiety-ridden moment finally arrives. Adam looks at her phone to see the heartbreaking messages. It seems like she didn't manage to delete them when she was being pestered by the bird. Or she only got to delete some. He starts crying because of them. As if their frightening situation wasn't bad enough, now this creeps in to add more fuel to the fearful fire. Lucky for Gwyn, she doesn't see Adam seeing her phone. Afterward, we see that the snake is still there. It crawls on Gwyn, which prompts her to tell Adam to take it off. But of course, there is nothing that either of them can do. Later, she lets him know that she's pregnant. What an appropriate time to say it, right when he found out about the cheating. It must make him question who the unborn child belongs to. Though all he asks is how long she has known about her pregnancy. We don't get to see her answer. Once daytime arrives, the lethal reptile is still with them. It doesn't want to leave. It seems like a peaceful home for it, in that tent. Adam asks his wife to get him something from his back. Yet she says she doesn't see it. We must recall that he left it behind, where he picked up the baboon spider. Adam then looks at her phone again. He tells her that it must have been something big, to make her come with him. Gwyn replies, simply asking that he stop messing with her phone. From her reply, it's uncertain if she knows that he knows about the messages. As time goes by, Adam seems to grow more frustrated. While he does, Gwyn starts ripping a hole in the tent, which makes the snake slither onto her. Following that, Gwyn gets an image of her being outside of the tent, looking back to see Adam lying lifelessly inside. It is the fear cooking in her mind. At some other time, he starts getting up. 
This action makes the snake territorial. When Gwyn suddenly starts getting up, Adam quickly holds her down. This excites their uninvited companion. As Adam lies on her, holding her down, he lets his concerned words out. He asks her what she did. The man's emotional state is full of anger and sadness. Coming closer to her, he asks if the baby is even his. Then he presses his hand on her face, asking where his wife is. To him, she is no longer that. He looks like he wants to take her life. As he continues to press down on the cheating, yet helpless lady, the snake watches them, hissing, in their moment of intense unease. Adam starts groaning, while becoming more out of control. Eventually, he calms down. Gwyn puts her hand on him in a loving way. She says it was always him. She also kisses him, and he accepts it. Soon enough, they return to reality, focusing on the snake behind them that could easily end their lives. It doesn't take long for the couple to quickly get up in unison to use their sleeping bag to hold the snake. As they hold it, Adam says that whoever gets bitten needs to stay calm. He also asks her if the other man would do this, if he would lose his life for her. Gwyn doesn't know if he would, though she knows that Adam tried to take her life just a moment ago. Adam responds by looking away. He says they both deserve to be in this situation. At that moment, Gwyn tells him the baby is theirs. She adds that it was her fault, hot is. To that, Adam asks if that makes him weak, but she just gives him a sad look. Afterward, Adam gets ready to shove the snake into the corner. He describes the plan to his wife. Before going through with it, he asks her to come back if he gets bitten. As they start collecting the snake with the sleeping bag, Gwyn sees part of it come out, which prompts her to attack it. This violent action makes the reptile jump out. Taking revenge on the lady, it bites her arm, finally committing the action that the couple have feared for hours. Shortly after, Adam collects the snake before exiting the tent to throw it outside. However, instead of staying put, the snake comes after him. Adam is forced to jump into the water, and the snake follows him there too, as if it's truly taking revenge. In there, the man struggles with it, using a rock as a weapon. Eventually, he finds that his hands are his best weapons, because he squeezes the venomous creature with them, to its possible end. He then lets it descend into the water. Back in the tent, Gwyn lies in a dizzy state with her wound. She takes a shoe to collect its laces that she uses to tie around her arm just past the bite mark. Unlucky for her, she notices she has a second mark higher up her arm, so she starts tying the laces past there. After that, we see Adam struggling to climb after his battle. Once he gets up, a bite mark is visible on his chest. That is also when he discovers a scarab on his hand. It happens to be the scarab that prompted him to go on this trip, so he gets somewhat excited to encounter it. There is a second one crawling on his palm. Soon, the first scarab crawls near Adam's bite mark, which makes the man notice that it's there. He becomes terrified upon such a devastating discovery. To add insult to his injury, he sees another scarab coming out from a second bite mark on him. While one exits, the first one enters the hole in his chest. Such a happening can only bring severe panic, so that's what Adam is overcome with. Yet there is some light at the end of this dark tunnel, because Adam sees the bag he left behind. It contains the antidote to their snake bite. However, we must recall there is only enough of it for one. In the tent, Gwyn inspects her wound while crying. She soon crawls out, to start applying her mouth to her snake bite near the water. Then she continues to crawl, no longer having the vitality to walk. Meanwhile, Adam searches his bag in a dizzy state. He finds his antidote, to start applying it to himself. Is this his decision? He's going to let his wife perish. While Gwyn crawls, she hears a baby crying. Soon enough, she sees one lying randomly on the rocks. But it's not a normal baby. It is grotesque. Thankfully, though, it was also a hallucination. One grounded in her fear of what could happen to her unborn child, now that the poison swims in her body. Following this, Adam comes to her. Seeing the bite marks on him causes her to cry. He does something unexpected, due to what we observed earlier. He injects her with the antidote. It seems like he didn't apply it to himself after all. The man still loves her, even after everything that happened. Or maybe he was just thinking about the life of his unborn child, in his last moments. The only thing Gwyn can do now is lie there and cry. 